All right, since the beginning of this month, 14 law enforcement officers have been killed in the line of duty, half of them after being assaulted. It is a deadly start to the year. Now, Ainsley Earhart reports on police officers under attack, but we do need to warn you that this piece contains some very graphic images and should not be viewed by children. Down, 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 hands, hands. hands. Across America, the streets are safer. Despite a deep recession, violent crime is down from coast to coast. Yet the very people charged with keeping us safe are coming under attack themselves. Forty-eight police officers were killed by gunfire in 2009, compared to 39 in 2008, a 23% increase. Most alarmingly, there were five incidents in 2009 where just one assailant gunned down multiple officers, killing 15 in all. March, Oakland, California. Four officers are killed by a violent parolee after he is pulled over. April, three officers ambushed and killed in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and two sheriff's deputies are shot and killed in Okaloosa County, Florida. July, Seminole County, Oklahoma. One man kills two sheriff's deputies. And November, Lakewood, Washington. Four officers are ambushed and murdered in a coffee shop before they even start their shifts. The 15 officers killed in these multiple death shootings were the most of any year since 1981. When you have five separate incidents in the United States where multiple officers are, are murdered, even when the officer is down and severely wounded, they don't stop. They move toward the officer because they, they want to put a bullet in their head. That tells me that violence is on an uptick. These suspects don't care, and uh, people need to be worried about that. Sergeant Ken Hogan trains officers in survival skills and how to live through violent attacks. I've been busier and busier. Every month it seems like I'm getting more and more phone calls to come talk to some police officers. Sergeant Hogan speaks from experience. Fifteen years ago, he was on patrol in Irvington, New Jersey, when he saw a man acting suspiciously. You park your car right here. Right here. I glance over at him, I got the window down, I stick my head out the window and I see, oh my man, hold up a minute. And he spins around, he's got a loaded 9mm Sig Zauer in his hand. That first round comes right through the window at 12 o'clock on the steering wheel of the police car. He's laying out rounds, laying out rounds, laying out rounds. I duck, he gets right up to the driver's side of the police car, leans in with those last four or so rounds. Second round, he hits me in the shoulder. Third round, hits me in the spine. And then he leans in a little bit more, and he gets down and he shoots me right in the head. And it was lights out. Everything went dark. Everything came to a dead stop. And we got units coming down. Units officer shot. Nelson at 21st. Amazingly, even with multiple gunshot wounds, Sergeant Hogan survived. He now lives every day with this hole in his head. See right here. A reminder of just how close he came. Violence against law enforcement officers is nothing new. In fact, about 60,000 officers are attacked every year, resulting in about 16,000 injuries. It takes only seconds for a routine situation to turn deadly. As Texas trooper Stephen Stone learned when he pulled over the driver of a pickup truck for speeding and found drugs and alcohol inside, he begins to pat down that driver. I noticed there was a pistol magazine in his left rear pocket. And uh, every officer knows no one carries around just pistol magazines. There's got to be a gun that goes along with it. And instantly, everything changes. As Trooper Stone draws his weapon, the driver and passenger pull theirs. You have seconds to try and decide what you're going to do, what's the best course of action. After that first shot, my vision went black. I thought every round they were firing was hitting me. Shot multiple times, he was saved by his bulletproof vest. Both suspects were later caught. Just in Los Angeles in the prior year, we had 527 assaults on police officers, and we're on track to exceed that number this year. Someone running on the road with a rifle, no further description. There could be taggers one day, and next day they're shooting at each other, and the next day they're not, not they're shooting at cops. Every police officer, um, by their training and experience, feels like they're a target, because you are. This past September, Kansas City, Missouri officers went to question a man who was involved in a minor car accident. 
Without warning and for no apparent reason, he immediately fires on them. Officers return fire. And the man is killed. Young rookie cops that are just starting out need to know that, uh, you know, it's a dangerous job. It's a great job, but it's a dangerous job. Which is why police academies train new officers to never let their guard down, making them watch videos of incidents like this one from Crisp County, Georgia. Three, Sheriff's Deputy Stephen Rankin pulls over a driver for blasting his stereo. Rankin approaches the car, but barely has a chance to say a word. Career criminal Ben Westbrook shoots him point blank in the face and then gets out to finish him off. Westbrook's gun jams, so he tries to beat the unconscious deputy to death. Deputy Rankin regains consciousness just as Westbrook is trying to wrestle his gun away. Deputy Rankin survived but was seriously injured. In New Jersey, the Essex and Union Counties Auto Theft Task Force is charged with getting car thieves off the streets. It can turn dirty real quick, so you have to keep your guard up at all times. Safety is their number one concern. We got to do it safer, we got to do it better. So, you know, we utilize our trucks, that's our primary tool. They swoop in on stolen cars with an overwhelming show of force. Put your hands up, there you go. Hoping to quickly neutralize a dangerous situation. And the most important thing is that when you do confirm a vehicle that's stolen, is to do a perfect tactical block on it. Get enough trucks to just overpower them with our vehicles. All right, you yeah. good. We'll, we'll come around, block every, you know, box the car in, and officers are cautious because with this job, you know, we've had shootings, we've had people with guns. We have to be careful. And people become you know, a, little, a little agitated or, or irritated that they were stopped in such a manner and maybe given a command a little, little abruptly, you know, let me see your hands. But it's really, it's not about somebody being a jerk to you. It's about, it's about wanting to go home at the end of the night. I think the public has slowly been becoming aware of what police work entails. Get down on the ground. But I don't think they understand the fear that's in the back of your mind at times you didn't go back? about what could possibly happen to you at any moment.